If I asked you what the deadliest spider in North America was, what would you say? The Black Widow? A bite from this spider will give you a very, very serious reaction. The Brown Recluse. Now this might be the most feared spider in the US. Both of these spider families certainly have toxic members, but allow me to introduce you to a new group of spiders, the wandering spiders. They look like big, beefy wolf spiders, but don't be fooled. Many of them possess incredibly potent neurotoxins, many times more toxic than the deadliest snakes on the planet. Florida wilderness may be known for its giant reptiles. We're about to come up on a huge alligator. This is Thing is majestic. And venomous snakes. Now some people will swear up and down that a cottonmouth will chase you. But if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know that I tend to go for the spiders. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and these creepy crawly creatures have fascinated me ever since I was a kid, and it's become my mission to uncover their biological secrets. I've certainly had my fair share of unpleasant encounters. Ow! <gasps> what happened? Bit me. But I love these little arachnids and the roles they play in the complex natural world all around us. For a few years now, I've been getting requests to feature Brazilian wandering spiders here on the channel. And believe me, I hope to one day get to see these amazing forces of nature in the wild. But while researching the wandering spider family, I came across a few unusual species that actually call the United States home. And the biggest of them can be found in Florida. Today we've got something a little bit special in mind for you. Now, we all know about the wandering spiders of South America, the infamous, deadly Brazilian wandering spiders. But what if I told you that there are wandering spiders right here in the US? And I know people are gonna flock to the comments already and say, of course it's in Florida. They're actually in more places in Florida, but I happen to be in Florida right now. And there is a wandering spider that can be found in Florida. So with any luck, this is really, I mean, I, I don't know where we'd see one they're kind of just everywhere and nowhere they're hard to find but um this habitat's pretty cool so i think if we don't find a wandering spider we'll at least find something cool there's one problem with searching for these spiders turns out we don't actually know a whole lot about their biology in fact if we can manage to get one it'll likely be the first footage of a wild florida wandering spider to ever exist on the internet our only lead is that they seem to turn up a bit more during the spring, but the habitat and behavior information we do have is too general to go off of. So I'm listing the help of my good friend, Emilio Pasmino. He's helped me get some of the most insane creatures Florida has to offer, and if I wanna complete my last target for this state, I'm gonna bet on him. He's heard of a population of these wandering spiders at a marsh in central Florida. So we're heading off on this misty morning in search of venomous arachnids. Spencer. What? I don't know what species, but right Where's that? here. Oh wow, oh he's fast. Yeah. What are you? That's a weird looking one. It's not a, no it's not a wandering spider, it's. It's not Chirolinansis? No. Um, here, get the camera real quick. Let's see if I can grab him. All right. You buddy. What are you? All right, he's in. Um, that is a wolf spider for sure. This is a weird little wolf spider. It's definitely a hognut of some kind. These are the burrow-dwelling wolf spiders. And what Emilio found is a male. And I can tell it's very small and has much larger, they look kind of like legs in front of the face there, but they're actually called petty pelps. Um, they're much larger than a female's would be. So this is a male hognut of some kind. It's a strange little one. It's gonna be very difficult to ID this completely. I have a couple of commenters who might know what this is. So if you know what it is, let me know down below. Um, but I have no idea what this is. He's very fast. I don't know. Are you trying to uh, free handle him? Let's go Get for a it. Shot. See if he's... Yeah. So you might be asking Spencer, this is a, an unfamiliar wolf spider species. Is this a good idea to, to free handle? We'll find out. Um, I am more worried about him doing exactly that than biting me. He's like spazzing out. They may be a little bit creepy looking, but they are much more likely to flee than stand and bite. We will see if the same is true about the wandering spider that we're looking for out here. I'd be asking Spencer, is seeing this wolf spider a good sign for the wandering spider? And that I, I honestly can't say. Because their roles in the ecosystem are so similar, I don't know for sure if they wouldn't be competing for resources. If we see a lot of wolf spiders around this size, it could be they're out competing the wandering spiders in the area, and that's why we're not seeing any of them. But this is supposed to be a hot spot, so it's possible that seeing a wolf spider 
out and about wandering around means there's enough prey to support both groups of spiders. That is a very awesome little find. Good spot by Emilio. Max, he has this tendency. He just gets the coolest stuff. He just wanders off somewhere and finds things. Um, you better not get the wandering spider before I do. Well, I'm the one who wanders, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is case in point of why I bet on Emilio. He wanders off into the woods and comes back with cool animals. Wandering spiders are mostly nocturnal, so at this time of day, they'd be undercover. We're fanning out, flipping everything we can find, and I'm keeping my ear out in case Emilio finds something amazing. All right, Emilio has wandered off again. Uh, let's see. Yo. What's up? Found something. He's got a smirk. That better not be a wandering spider. Well, it's not wandering or even a spider, but I did get this pretty little blue Florida centipede. Oh my God, look how cute he is. Oh my God, I love these centipedes. Oh, uh, he's like clinging to the, what are you doing there, buddy? He was much more active when I got him, but he seems oh, to calm down. Oh, now he's flipping out. Oh, I love these Scolopendra centipedes. Now this is one of the smaller species here in the US, but this is a genus that contains the American giant centipedes, some of which are pretty seriously venomous. Might be asking Spencer, well, what's the significance of a centipede in a wandering spider video? And the reason is we will find these centipedes pretty much the same way we'll find the wandering spider, flipping them undercover. When you're looking for an invertebrate predator, the things you wanna look for are signs of high prey diversity and large healthy prey populations. The easy way to see that is just if there's tons of little bugs around when you're flipping in the areas where you'd expect to see the, the predator you're looking for. But seeing a good diversity of other predatory animals that would be eating similar things means there's competition for a wandering spider, yes, but it means that prey is active. So flipping a centipede seems like a very good sign. Emilio is two for two. As the day grew longer and the mist gave way to the warm Florida sun, I started to think if we hadn't seen one yet, even this supposed hot spot might be a bust. The thing with these spiders is, they're infrequently reported online, but they're not listed as significantly rare, like say the Red Widow. These wandering spiders are like ghosts of the forest floor, seemingly everywhere and nowhere at the same time, and only appearing if they want to be seen. As we walked through the woods, this thought made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. These potentially venomous spiders could be pretty much anywhere, watching our every move as we fruitlessly searched. The trail we were on looped around, and we decided finally that at the end of this loop, if we hadn't seen anything, we'd call it. My chest was a tight knot as I considered throwing in the towel. I've tracked down recluses. I've tracked down widows. But I finally get a lead on a North American wandering spider, and I come up empty-handed? As a spider biologist, I couldn't sit with that. We approached the trailhead with defeat in our hearts, but I noticed several logs off to the side of the trail. In a last-ditch effort to avoid a loss, I turned them over and almost didn't recognize what I saw. Wolf spider, that's a weird one. What are you? You're not a hog now. Nah. That's a wandering spider. I need to make sure. Hold on. How fast are you? Oh, it's fast, okay. On the ground. That's good. This spider right here is something extremely special. This is the Florida wandering spider, and its name doesn't lie. This is related to the Brazilian wandering spiders, the most toxic arachnids on the planet. Now, the coloring was a little bit duller than I thought it would be. So at first glance, it threw me off, and you can see why. It looks like a normal drab little wolf spider, but this bizarre creature is actually one of the incredible secrets of Florida wilderness. This is not something you would normally come across. This time of year, I knew there was an off chance at seeing them, but I didn't expect to actually find one. One of my favorite things about spiders like this is when they're not very common, there's usually not a lot we know about their biology. So pretty much every interaction, you have the chance of discovering something brand new. Now, as you can see here, unlike a lot of wolf spiders, she can actually scale the inside of this plastic container, which is unusual to me. 
uh, and I'm, I'm enjoying seeing just how different this is than your run-of-the-mill wolf spider. They're incredibly quick. Uh, you saw when I was trying to catch her that this was not an easy spider to subdue. The reason I can tell this apart from a regular wolf spider is the pattern. You might see this and say, well, Spencer, this looks just like any other wolf spider. How do I know if I'm stumbling upon a wandering spider in my backyard? And I think that's a really good question because knowing how to identify spiders can be really, really helpful, especially in environments where there are significantly dangerous species. The patterning on this spider is very indicative of the Florida wandering spider. That jagged pale stripe all the way down the body is a pretty good tell. It's unlikely you ever want to get this close to a wandering spider, but the eyes are the perfect tell. And that's how I was able to ID this as a Florida wandering spider after I captured it. Unlike wolf spiders, which have those two big eyes and kind of a little frowny face, of four small eyes underneath. The wandering spiders have almost like a little square configuration of four large eyes in the front of their face. And this little spider is no exception to that. They're not quite as toxic as their South American cousins, but this is still something that I would consider to be medically significant. There are very few reports of bite, but research has shown that a bite from this spider can cause swelling, dizziness, nausea, and even flu-like symptoms for several days, which is kind of like a milder version of a black widow. So you're not likely to die from this spider bite, but if it were to bite you, it would probably not be the most fun time. Now, what I'm gonna do actually, I wanna show you that even wandering spiders, which have probably one of the worst reputations of spiders on the planet, are not actually out to get you. I'm gonna hold this wandering spider in my bare hand and see if it's actually aggressive. All right, let's take this spider out and see how the Florida wandering spider actually behaves. That. Ooh, she's fast. Look at that. Look at that spider. Ooh. Jumped off. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but what I noticed while handling the spider is that it kept jumping off within seconds. But I realized that if I got the spider in the core shadow of my arm or my hand, it would actually calm down and stay put. There are a lot of spiders that are not super fond of the light. But what I'm seeing with this wandering spider is it absolutely loathes the light. And this seems almost more like some of the scorpions I've worked with than pretty much any spider I've ever seen. That is a wandering spider in my bare hand. That is insane. That's a, that's a sentence I never thought I would actually say when I first started this channel, because back then I didn't know that the US had native wandering spider species. But you can see right there, she doesn't like the light at all. These are actually nocturnal spiders. Where we flipped her, she was underneath the log, probably biding her time until nightfall. And that is because these are nocturnal active hunters. You notice it looks a lot like a wolf spider, right? Well, their behavior is very similar to a wolf spider. But unlike a lot of other nocturnal animals, these guys have incredible vision and they use that vision to hunt down all kinds of crazy little insects out here in this environment. But I would not be surprised if one of these spiders could take down something considerably larger than it is. Wow. This is a spider I knew we had a shot at finding, but I didn't think we'd actually see. But here I am, hands-on, with North America's wandering spider. And yeah, I would consider this to be a medically significant spider. Wouldn't kill you, but it wouldn't be a fun bite. But even still, you can see right here, she's walking around on my hand. She's calmed down quite a bit, and she means me absolutely no harm. Beautiful arachnid, even if it is one of the most fearsome species of spider on the planet. Florida wandering spider in the wild, and an absolute gem of Florida wilderness. Doesn't get any better than that. As a biologist and as a spider hunter, getting face to face with a wandering spider in Florida is my first step towards tackling even deadlier species in South America and beyond. Walking out of this interaction, I've had a rare glimpse into the behavior of a lesser known venomous spider and have seen firsthand that even these animals are not fearsome monsters, but rather simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. I'm going to conduct further research on these Florida wandering spiders because I want to see what sort of toxic power these North American species possess, so stay tuned for that. Until then, I'm going to continue venturing forth into the unknown to discover the incredible secrets hiding just beyond our doors. With the capture of the Florida wandering spider successfully behind me, I can close this chapter of my adventure, taking powerful lessons from the victories and failures of Florida. If you want to see another unusual secretive spider that's lurking across the US, check out this video right here, where I track down the bizarre purse web spider, which looks awfully similar to Australia's deadly funnel webs. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside 
and find your own adventure.